hello everyone and welcome back to the channel so i noticed that frontend mentor have a new challenge that is called contact form and so if you go into frontendmentor.io forward slash challenges you can get this contact form challenge you can open this card and it says i downloaded the starter files but it says that these are the things that your user should be able to do so we're going to attempt this challenge in this video and what you need to do is just download the starter files so if you go into visit challenge hub then you can download the starter files right here which is going to download a zip file for you and when you download that zip file and extract it it's going to extract for you in this folder or a folder that is similar to this one and what we're going to do is we're going to build this out in react and we're going to use formic for the form validation so we're going to use formic for the form validation right here and so we're going to build this in react because it's a relatively small project we don't need to use like next year or something and so what i'm going to do is inside my terminal i have my terminal open right here i just want to cd into my desktop and then into a folder on my desktop that is called yt videos and then inside here i'm going to say npx create dash react dash app and i'm going to call this contact dash form dash yt and then i'm going to just say enter and then wait for this to finish running and then once it finishes running then we are going to continue and so once that finishes running you can see that we have a new folder created that is called contact form yt so i'm going to cd into that folder so cd contact form yt and then i'm going to open up an instance of visual studio code by saying code dot and there we go so once it opens up you can see that we have our default folder structure right here so we have the public folder which has our images as well as our index html we have the source folder where we're going to be working and then we have the git ignore the package json and package package lock as well as the readme now the first thing that i want to do right in the beginning is i want to go ahead and install formic and i'm going to also install yap which we're going to be using for our validation so i'm going to say npm install formic and i also want to install yap so i'm going to let this run and once it finishes running we're going to continue and there we go so once we have this then i want to go ahead and say npm run start which is going to open up our development server on localhost 3000 so that we can just see what we're going to be working with and there we go so if you take a look in your package json file you will notice that we have yap installed and we also have formic installed now as we begin building we need to get the design files as well as the images so right inside your folder where you downloaded the starter files you can go into that folder and then you can get the assets the design the index html as well as the, these other files now on my system there are some files that are hidden such as the git ignore so i am on linux so i'm just going to say Control h and this is going to reveal the hidden files which is the git ignore now if you're in windows there are ways that you can do that from the file explorer you can just google how to do that now i'm going to grab all of this and then i'm just going to say copy and then inside my workspace i'm going to say uh where is it oops it's not there let me see drag and drop drag and drop and then just say copy folders don't say add folders to workspace so copy folders and you can replace this there's no problem you can don't replace the git ignore Ooh, no, no, no. don't replace the git ignore so we have the assets the design we have the index html we have the readme we replace the readme because we want the front end mentor readme here and then we we want what the git ignore so for the git ignore we're going to paste in this git ignore from our downloaded files we're just going to open this up and then we're going to copy this so copy and then we're going to paste it inside our git ignore from react so paste it on the bottom and then we're going to change this to line 36 and then we're going to change this to line 29 this to line 30 just so that these others can also be ignored you don't want to not ignore these ones so save that and then we can go back into our application nothing should change on the screen as you can see you can reload it or you can say control f5 which is going to reload the cache so that you don't have any problems and we can begin to build this out 
so inside our design we can get the desktop preview so this is the desktop preview of how the 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 form looks like and this is the error state you can see this field is required, required da, da, da. and then we have the focus state as well and then we have the hover state and we have the mobile design so this is what we're going to be building and then as well as the success state that says message sent so that looks nice so what i'm going to do is i want to place this outside uh it should be possible i think there we go so i want to place this here and then i'm going to open up my vs code right on top probably should make this full screen as well make it full screen there we go so that we can just take a look at this now the first thing that i'm going to do is inside our application should close this so inside my source folder i want to delete the app css the app test js i'm going to delete the logo report with vitals and setup test so delete them and then inside my index.js now this is going to cause an error immediately when you delete it because now we don't have this file right so i'm going to remove this we we don't have this file anymore remove its import as well and then when you save it and inside app.js you can just remove everything and then you can say export default function app and then inside here we can just return a simple h1 that says hello world and when you save that then it's just going to say hello world on the screen and now i just remembered something i want to install tailwind css because i don't want to style all of this out using vanilla css so tailwind docs or tailwind docs and it's not the colors i need the what is it tailwind css so get started and we should go into framework guides and we are using uh, please load in okay so we're using react so create react app so we have done these two so now we need to go ahead and do this third one so copy and then Control j to open up our terminal and then you can open up a new terminal right here and then you can just paste it in so install tailwind css as a dev dependency and then copy this next one and then let this finish running so paste in the second command which is going to create our tailwind config file and then inside our config file we just want to copy this and then we're going to paste it inside our config right here paste it and then remove one comma and this should be okay even though we're not using typescript you can just have it in just in case you like add in a file or something or if you want to use typescript and we should copy this inside our index css so copy and then inside index css we can just paste it on top and we don't really need we don't need this and yeah, we don't need that we can remove it so save it and that should be okay so now if we reload our application maybe it will work but maybe it won't because we have a config file now so let's just say Control f5 let's see if that will work it doesn't so we have to restart it so shut it down and then restart it and there we go so you can see that now this is working so inside our react app let's begin to build out our form so i'm going to go inside my index CSS and inside the body i'm going to add a tailwind class by saying at apply and i want to apply a bg dash blue dash 100 and then save that and it should give it a very slight blue background now i should say that i'm not going to focus on how perfect it looks so for these colors that we have for the colors that we have i'm just going to use a what's it called um an educated guess so i'm not going to focus on how this color should look really but if you want to do that you can go inside your style guide and you're going to find the colors right here right here as well as the fonts that you need so back inside our index css oh, we're really done with this this part really but now inside our app.js we want to go ahead and begin to create our form and i think it would be prudent if we separate the form from the app so what i'm going to do is inside my source folder i'm going to create a new folder called components and then i'm going to create a new file inside there once the folder is created come on so annoying 
Okay, there we go. So inside my components, I'm going to create a new file called form.js. Oh, you know what? I just realized that probably this is not going to be visible in the video. So let me increase this zoom. I think that's better. That is better. So the form, uh, the form is, should not be here, should be inside the components. Oh my God, my computer, my computer. Oh my God. Okay, so inside the components, there we go. Oh my God, my computer is, uh, yeah. I really need a new machine. Really need a new machine. Okay, there we go. So components and then form JS. Now inside our form, we're going to say this, we're going to say export default function form. And then we're just going to return a div. We're going to return a div with, let's say an H2 that says contact form and then save it. And then inside our app JS, we're going to go ahead and render out our form. So now it's not going to be inside an H1, but I want it to be inside a fragment. Oh my God, what? This is so annoying. So inside here, I want to go ahead and render our form. Make sure that you import it. My auto import is not working. So let's say import form from dot slash components dot slash form. And then let's go ahead and save that. And now if we take a look at our application, once this saves, there we go. So if we take a look at our application, then we should see contact form right there. So that is looking fantastic. Now we can go ahead and change the title for this. So you can go inside your public folder and inside the index HTML. You can go ahead and change this title right here to say front end mentor. And then you can just say contact form. And then save that as well. And then close it down. And then now we can work wholly in the form.js. So the first thing that I want to do is I want to go ahead and give our form a background color. So give it a class name of BG white and give it a padding all around the form and a rounded dash large and a very slight box shadow just so that you can have like this kind of effect that we have here. I mean, this doesn't look like it has a box shadow, but it does have a background white. It has a rounded borders as you can see, and then it has some padding because it's pushing everything inwards. So let's go ahead and if you take a look, where is it? There we go. So this is our form. Obviously you don't want it to stretch out. So what you can do is we can give it a max width here of about large and then you can give it an MX of auto, which should now center it. There we go. Large is too small. So let's say, let's say 2XL, which is 2XL. Hmm, that looks okay. And then what I want to do is on mobile screens, I want to have a padding on the top and bottom of 10, which is going to push it downwards. You know what? Sorry, not a padding, but a margin so that it is applied outside and then it pushes it down. And then what I'm going to do is on large screens, I want to remove the margin. So on large screens such as this one, the margin is now removed. But on large screens, I want this to be a flex box. And then on large screens, again, I want to say items the center. And then on large screens, I'm going to say justify the center. And then on large screens, I'm going to give it a H of screen, which is 100 viewport heights. And then once I do that, then it's going to center out our form. But it doesn't do that because this should not be here. Let's remove the flex. Let's remove everything up to the margin. Remove it and then let's wrap this inside a. Let's do a section. So the section then move it downwards and then give those class names on the section. And that should now work. There we go. So we have our contact form. And then you can begin to work in our contact form. And then, of course, you don't want the form to be shrunken like this. It's shrunken because of the item center that we have right here. So what you can do is you can say give this div a width of full, which is the div that holds the form. And when you save that, then it's going to stretch out, as you can see right there. That's looking much better. So let's go ahead and grab the H2, give it a class name. And I'm going to say text teal dash, let's say 800, and then text text dash center and then text dash for XL margin bottom let's give it a margin bottom of eight and then you can also say font dash bold so font dash bold and save it and there we go so we have our our heading two 
which looks like that. Okay, not really like that. <laughs> let's fix it. So it's not centered, it's to the left. Or I can do that. I can say that for large screens, then the text should be left. And then let's reduce it for small screens, or rather for all screens, really. And we're going to have that. And then what you can do is now say font semi bold. So font semi bold, and we can say what that is what we're going to have. And then we can update the color as well. So text till let's say 950 to make it much darker. So 950, there we go. And then now let's begin to build out our form, which looks like this. So we're going to have a first name and last name, and this is for large screens. On small screens, they're all cascading one on top of the other. But for large screens, we can see that we're going to need this to be its own part, the label as well as this input, and then this label as well as this input to be its own part. And then these two are going to have a parent so that we can display grid or flex on them so that they are aligned side by side. So that is the, the formula that we're going to use. So inside here, we're going to have a form with no action, but inside this form, we're going to have a div, and then this div is going to have an article, and then this first article is going to have a label, and the label is going to be for first name. Let's just say first dash name, and then the text is going to say first name. Is it capitalized? Yes, it is. So first name with an asterisk, meaning it's going to be required. And then in, below this really is going to be an input with a type of text with a name for first name, with an ID of first name. And then the placeholder, does it have a placeholder? It doesn't, but we can set it to required for now really. Oh, you know what? Let me not set it to required because we're going to do the validation using here. Now, once we do this, then I'm going to copy down this article. So copy and paste it below this, and then change this, uh, change every instance of first to last. There we go. And what I've done there is I've just selected, I've just selected the, the first name, for example, here, and then I'll say control D. So control D, control D, control D, which is going to select every other text that is similar to the one that you highlighted. So you can just do that. It's much easier. And then below this div now, below this div, we're going to have another div. And this one is going to be a label. And the label is going to say email address. So email, so sorry, HTML4 email dash address. And then the text is going to say email address. Give it an asterisk. And then below this, we're going to have an input with a type of email, with the name of email dash address, with an ID of email dash address. And then below this div, we're going to have a similar structure like the one we had on top for our two radio buttons. So below this div, we're going to have another div with two articles. So article. And then this is going to have a label. And this is going to say general inquiry. So inquiry. And then the text is going to say general inquiry with an asterisk. Oh, sorry, this one doesn't have an asterisk. Yes. Oh, wait a minute. Uh, wait, I'm structuring this wrongly. I'm structuring it wrongly. This should be an input. Uh, this should be, what's it called? A label, not an input. So uh, the label that says query type, so query dash type with the text that says query type with an asterisk. And then below this, we're going to have two inputs. So input times two, which are going to be radio buttons. So radio buttons, oops, did that wrongly. Let's just say input with a type of radio, which is going to create our radio button with the name for this one being general, general dash inquiry, inquiry, ID of general dash inquiry, and then copy this down. This second one is going to say support request, so support dash request, and then the name is going to be support dash request. And it's going to be an input with a type of radio button as well. And then what I want to do is because these inputs are styled side by side. So I want to grab them and put them inside an article. Because now the label is going to be its own. And then the inputs are going to be placed side by side. So we're going to use this article to be the parent for this input. So that when we display flex on these articles, then they're going to place these two inputs side by side. Now, 
I just noticed that when I click on this label, I want one of these to be highlighted. In this case, I'm going to do it for the general inquiry. So general inquiry, query. And the reason why I've done that once again is this HTML4 attribute is going to be linking to this ID. So I want that when a user clicks on this label, then it's going to highlight the corresponding like section or the corresponding input, just like we have done for these ones on top. So when I click on the email address, then it's going to highlight this input specifically. Now, once we build that, then we have our text area on the bottom. So the div below this div, we're going to have another div with a text area with the name of text area, uh, with message, not text area, with an ID of message. And then it doesn't have a placeholder. And then the columns are going to be, the columns are these ones that go down. So columns are going to be 30. And then the rows are going to be 10. And we're going to have a label on top. So the label is for message, message, and then the text says message, with an asterisk. And then below this div, we're going to have our div, another div really, with an input type of checkbox. So input type checkbox that says consent, this should be the consent one with an ID of consent. And then the text for this says I consent. So I consent to being contacted by the team or with an asterisk. And then finally, below this div, we have a button with the type of submit that says submit. And there we go. So save that. And if we take a look, this is what we're going to have. So we have our two radio buttons, so the query type with the two radio buttons, or the radio buttons don't have text. So let me see if I add them here, so general inquiry. And then if I go ahead and add this one here to be support quest, see that, there we go. And then let's begin to now style this out. So because we're using Thelion CSS, the first name here, the input for the first name is, see where the cursor changes right here? This is where the input is, as well as for the last name and so on and so forth. So let's style out all the inputs. Now we know that the inputs as well as the labels are going to have similar styles. So what I want to do first of all is for all the labels, I want all of them to be block elements. So I'm going to say add apply block, which is going to place the label and then the input below it. And then I want the labels to be a certain color, yes. So inside the labels, we're going to say text teal dash 900 and then text small just to make them a bit smaller and save that. And we have that for our labels. That looks nice, nice, nice. And then for our inputs, for inputs, I'm going to say this. So at apply, I want a border to be present. So border and then the border is going to be slate dash. Let me say about 600 just to begin with so that we can see our inputs right there. Let me see how is it? It's a bit lighter. So our inputs are going to say border slate dash 400. Okay. And then we're going to say, give it a rounded, a rounded border, and then give it a padding on the Y of two and a padding on the X of four, just to increase its size a bit. And then we're going to say width dash four so that it stretches out all the way to the end, as we can see right there. And let's see, let's see. So we have this our input. Okay, what else do we need? We need to change the text. So I'm going to say text small for the inputs. And then on hover, see on hover, we want something to happen. So let's check out the hover state. So on hover, then this becomes like uh, um, uh, much more visible. The border becomes much more visible. So on hover, I'm going to say text till dash, let me say hmm, 700. And let's give it a transition so that it fades in and then on focus so on focus then oh nothing really changes really nothing changes on focus so i mean we can have the same the same styles here so save that and then let's check it out so we can test it out so that we can see whether it's working so the color of the input changes but then we have this outline. So let's remove the outline. So you can say outline dash now, which should now remove the outline. And oh, sorry, uh, hover, 
oh tech, this is textile no that should not be it on hover we need the border the border should change so border dash till dash 700 so that now it's barely it is barely visible barely visible maybe, maybe let's make this wider so border dash two just to make it wider so that we can see what's happening so barely visible but then you know it works and then so this is on hover and then let's also do on focus so on focus we want the border dash till dash 700 so that when we focus on it meaning we're typing on this one then that is what the border becomes that is much better and then now let's go back into you know what we need the same for the text area so let's say input comma text area which is going to apply the same styles to the text area as you can see now let's go back inside our app.js or rather inside our form and then let's begin to style out all of this out so for this label we're going to give it a class name and i'm going to say margin bottom of two and then i'm going to copy this style copy and then paste it on this label as well and we're going to have that so it's going to push it just a bit and then on this div on this first div right here i'm going to give this a class name and i'm going to say give it a class name of grid and then i'm going to say that on large screens then the grid column should be two which is going to place this side by side and then i'm going to give it a gap of four by default so that it, uh, it just separates this out and then let's go inside the form and give this form a class name of grid as well and then give it a gap of four to separate out all the different sections that we have as you can see right there so that it just looks a bit neater and then the email address we can go inside the email address right here give it a margin bottom oops not there email address here give it a margin bottom of two as well just to separate it out from this input and then for the query type as well right here give it a margin bottom of two and these are going to be our radio buttons as you can see oops that's not how the radio buttons should work <laughs> that is not how they should work so probably what what needs to happen is these two needs to be inside another form maybe i've forgotten how do you create radio buttons anyway let's tell this out see how these are centered but the text is not centered it's because the inputs have a width of full right here so if i remove the width of full what you'll notice is oops, what you'll notice is the the, the thing is what, what they call the radio buttons are now aligned properly but i need the width of full to be there just so that this looks better so what we're going to do is reset the styles right inside here so right here i'm going to give this a class name and i'm going to say that the width should be auto and that should now bring this here there we go and then do the same thing for the support request we can remove these spaces so right here we can give this a class name and then say width dash auto we should now bring it right there okay and then now for this two, these two are styled just a bit differently. If you take a look at this, they're just a bit different, right? Yes. So what we're going to do therefore is this. I will need, hmm, I will need this entire thing to be inside the div so that I can give it a border. So the very same thing for this second input as well. And then inside this div, I'm going to give this a class name and I'm going to say border dash two. I know this class name got the same for, for the input. So rather than typing it out, let's just copy it and then paste it here. But we don't need the outline. We don't need the outline here. We need the transition, the border. We don't need the width that's full because div is already a block element, meaning it takes up the entire width in which it is placed. So we can have that. That should be okay. There we go so general inquiry and then just copy these class names copy and then paste them on this second div and that should do for support request and then i remember that this parent article is the parent for these two divs that have our inputs so i'm going to give this a class name of read and gap dash four which is going to separate them out and then i'm going to say for large screens and the grid columns are going to be two which is going to place them side by side there we go looking nice and we need we need a space right here i just noticed 
So probably let's add in that space again. And then let's add in the space here as well. Just to have a bit of space. There we go. And then for the message, which is our text area right here, we need a class name of margin bottom of two just to separate it out from the text area just a bit. And then we need to do the same thing that we have done here for our checkbox. So for the checkbox, what we're going to do is, where is it here? We're going to give it a class name of with dash auto, which is going to bring this right there. And then we can change the, the color. We can change the color here. We can say text. Oh, sorry, not there, not for the input, but for the div. Give it a class name of text till 800. Mm, just to make it like that. And then text as small to make it a bit smaller. And then finally our submit button. So for the submit button, we're going to give it a class name. And I'm going to say BG till dash 800 text white font semi bold and let's see save that okay give it a padding y of 2 padding x of 4 rounded dash large make it a bit larger or let me just say rounded rounded okay and then on hover we want the pg to be till dash 900 with a slight transition and there we go so now when you click on the submit button, then it submits the form as you can see right here. But then now we want to go ahead and add in our validation. So for our validation, this is what we're going to do. If you go ahead into formic.org, so just to the original website, then you can go ahead and click on get started. And then inside get started, we have guides right here, and then we have validation. So we want to click on this to open this up. And the type of validation that we're going to be using is the one that involves YAP. So this type of schema right here. And so this is what we're going to be doing really for this entire thing. So we know that we have already installed Formic because we installed it when we began. So we're going to get access to this Formic and then the form and then the field. And what that means basically is we are going to need to refactor quite a bit of things. As you can see that now we don't use the inputs, but we use the field, the field component. And then we also need to go ahead and import YAP. So let me just copy this too. So copy. And then right inside our contact form right on top. We can we can close this. We don't need it anymore because we've already done that. So desktop design. So inside our form right on top, we can import these two. Or rather these five. Or rather these four, not five. And then we can go ahead and this is the type of schema. So when you're using YAP, you need to create a schema which you're going to be implementing in your form and you do that by creating a variable name here and then setting it equal to yap dot object dot shape and then defining your schema inside that so this type of schema you're going to have access to it when you pass in validation schema inside the formic so let's go ahead and do that step by step so we already imported these two so let's go ahead and um you know what let me just do it manually because i think it's going to be easier than copying and pasting uh, not really easier but it's going to be a bit more understandable so let's go ahead and do this where's my code right here so for our schema what i'm going to do is this i'm going to say const because this is a contact form so i'm going to say contact schema is equal to yap dot object dot shape and then pass in my object inside here and so we know that we have the first name and for the first name i'm going to say it's going to be a string we know that a name is always a string so i'm going to say yap dot string and we want to pass in the minimum value so dot mean the minimum uh what's it called the minimum length yes the minimum length is going to be two characters or you can you can give it any car any number of characters that you want depending on your depending on your needs. So the minimum number of characters for any name is usually two, right? Because there are people who are called Lee, like Jet Lee, you know? And then there are others who are called Guy, so three characters. So the minimum value is going to be like two. And then in case it is less than two, then the, the, the text that we want to show, the error, the error state is going to say first name, or rather, let me say two short, let me just say two short, it's going to be easier. So two short. And then 
we want to pass in the maximum amount of characters so for this one i'm going to do a, a very large number let me just do something like 72 and then we're going to say the text is going to say too long in case it is more than that and then we're going to say let me add an exclamation and then we're going to set this to required so required and there we go and so this is the schema for the first name we're going to do the same thing for the last name so it's going to be something very similar you can just do this and paste it here so minimum two and then maximum 72 too long and they set it to required and then for the email we're going to do email we're going to say yap dot string and the minimum oops sorry the minimum is going to be two and we're going to say enter a valid valid email actually is that how you do for the email yep the string email invalid email required uh wait let's just copy this part let's just copy that for the email and then paste it in we can remove this first part so yep the string and we have the email and then we have what else this is the email this is the query type we need the message so we need the message message we're going to say yap dot string and then the email so not the email what am i doing yep the string the minimum amount of characters is going to be two and we're going to say two short once again and then the maximum amount of characters i'm just going to say five thousand and then we're going to say two long so five thousand characters and then we're going to set it to required as well and let's see that should now be fine I think that should now be okay so once we have this then we need to do quite a bit of refactoring so let me just take a look at this so we have the formic we need to pass in formic which is going to be the parent for everything so what we're going to do is the entire form i'm going to cut it out so cut out the entire form all the way to the bottom and then i'm going to pass in formic formic and then close it out and then inside the formic what i'm going to do is right here so we need to pass in the initial values so the initial values uh for our schema which in this case is going to be first name last name email that da, da, and so on and so forth so the initial values are going to be it's an object yes so we're going to pass in the first name the last name the email and we're going to pass in the message as well because right here is where i want to detect the error states and then once we pass in our initial values we want to go ahead and pass in the validation schema right here and the validation schema is going to be our contact schema so contact schema and then once we pass in our contact schema right here we want an on submit handler so on submit i'm just going to say i just want to say that the values that are going to be inside our form we want to console log those values so console.log the values and that's looking okay and then right inside here once we use formic and we pass in our initial values then we get access to the errors which is basically what we have inside here so too short too long that are required and so on and so forth we get access to the errors and then we also get access to a state that is called touched and what touched means is whether you are focusing on that particular input so once we have access to these two states then we can use them to check for errors within our form so right below this and you know what i'm actually doing this wrongly sorry about that it should be a bracket uh, sorry a curly bracket and then a normal bracket and then a curly bracket and then we need to get the errors and then the touched and then we're going to pass in our error function here and set up our our return so we want to return a form element or rather form component from formic and then inside here we can get the field so the name for this field is going to be first name and first name is going to be corresponding to this first name that should be okay now when i save this it's going to break our application because we, we built it out using um oh you know what it's giving this error because our component is called form but we're also using form here so let me rename this to contact form and then save it and then that should get rid of the error and then when i reload it then it's going to break so oh wait oh it's not you it's yap there we go 
so yap is not defined so that should fix that error then first name is not defined oh you know what you know what we should pass them should pass in the the types so type of string and this is a string as well and this is a string that should fix it there we go there we go so you can see that we have our form right here and so basically this is what we want to be building now i want to change this up so instead of uh doing this once again we know that we already cut out our form so i'm just going to paste it in and then we're going to do a bit of refactoring so inside here we no longer need this form but i think we can add class names here so class name is going to be grid and gap dash four and then let's remember to also remove the form from the bottom because we have an error right here so we need to remove that and then we can just begin from here so this is input type text of checkbox this can remain this is going to be a form so not a form but a field field element so the field element and then the message okay that's okay this can remain this can remain because we're not touching that and then this is going to be a field and the name here we can remove the type the name is going to be email and then the id is going to be email address so that it links to this label and then this is going to be a field once again the type we can remove it because we already defined it in our schema the name is going to be last name capitalized the id is going to be last name just like that that's okay and then finally we have this one with the type of field also with the component called field and then the name is going to be first name capitalized and then like that okay so when i save that then we should have our form back there we go so you can see that we have our form back now what we need to do is we need to add in the error states so what we're going to do is right below the field input we're going to say this we're going to say that when errors uh actually how do you do that i've forgotten it should be when errors dot first name meaning we are now accessing the initial values that we have and we we want to pass in the 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 string that shows the error so you can see that when errors dot first name and when touch dot first name is true then we want to return this so let me let me just copy this it's going to be easier so when let me save it so when errors dot first name meaning when you have an error and when the test is also true, meaning when we are focusing on that input, when these two conditions are true, when they evaluate to true, then we want to show the errors dot first name, meaning we want to go ahead and show this one or this one, depending on what is uh, the current error really. And then when that evaluates to false, then we want to show null, meaning we don't want to show anything. So you can save that and then you can test it out. So right here, you can see that first name is a required field. Let's go ahead and style out this div. Let's give it a class name of text dash rows dash 400. So give it a red color. Let me say 500 to make it a bit darker so that it's readable. And then let's say text small to make it just a bit smaller. So first name is a required field. And then we're going to do the same thing. So this is first name. So we're going to copy this. And inside our last name, we want to do the same thing. So just select this first text and then say Control D, Control D, and then change this to last name, last name, capitalize it. Make sure that you give this name the very same name that you gave it on top. Otherwise, this validation doesn't work. And then error the last name, and then this is email. So Control D, Control D. So this is email, and then we want the message as well. So here should be message message save that and last name is required and message is also required there we go looking fantastic now let's see. so email says required where did they mess up where did they give this this to hmm, let me see too short too long required so if yeah, if I give it too, sh too short a name, then it says too short. And then if, when I give it a very long name, then it should now say too long. There we go. So that is working as we expect it to work. But then first name is a required field. Can I add in, can I add in the text here that says first name is required? Can I do that? How can I add in the custom name? Okay, there we go. So first name is required. 
So we need to pass in the string inside here for the required field so that it shows the correct the correct uh, text. So last name, last name is required. And then for this one, you can say, please, please enter a valid email. And then this one says, the text for this can just say required for the message save that and we're going to have that looking nice present a valid email and required there we go looking nice now for the submit button i want that when we click on the submit button then a toast notification shows up now for that i'm going to use a package that is called react toastify so i'm going to say npm install react dash toastify and then as that installs what i'm going to do is the following I'm going to go ahead and say below this, I'm going to say import toast, which is a method from React Toastify, and then toast container, which is the actual toast that shows up from React Toastify. And then we also need to import the CSS. So import what's it called? Um how do you import the CSS? Oh my god, let's just Google it. I always forget how to import the CSS react dash toastify. Come on, loading. Let's see, we need to import the CSS. And that's this line right here. So let's copy this line. Let's paste it inside here. So to import our CSS. Now I want that when we submit it on submit right here, it should work right here. I am not sure whether it's going to work. But I want to say toast.success and I'm going to say form successfully submitted with an exclamation point. And let's see. Let's see. Let's see. We can do what, 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 what? Oh, the toast container. Oh my God. So the toast container can be rendered anywhere because it's always positioned absolute. So I'm going to add the toast container here and then I'm going to give it a theme of colored. And you know what, let me not do that yet. So let me just have the default toast container and then save that. And then let's fill in the form. So my name, oops, my name, uh, let me say one, two, three, four, at gmail.com. Let's choose this one. Let's say message nothing. Let's say consent. And then when I submit it, then the toast shows up, right? Now, I don't want this to be white in color just like this. So what I'm going to do is, that's why I passed in the theme. So the theme for this is going to be colored, meaning it's going to be colored depending on the current color of the the, the state of the form. So because I, I said that it's going to be a success message, so now it's green. So if you wanted to pass in an error state, you can just say something like toast.error and when you pass in the error state and submit it, then it, now it's red, as you can see. So I want this to be a success state. And then I want the position for this to be on the top position is going to be top center. I Meaning it's going to come here instead of to the side. So top center right there. So that's looking nice. That is looking quite nice. Uh, something that I do want to change though is I don't want the text here to be black. I think it's changed because of because of uh, the field that we're now using. So if I go ahead and give this a class name of text dash till dash, what is 800, did I use 800? Yes, text till 800, I think that is much better. So let me go ahead and copy this and then let's paste it on this field and then paste it on this field and then paste it on, what else? On this div, uh, where is it, where is it, where is it? Where is it? this div this div should have a text text dash till dash 800 and then here as well text dash till dash 800 there we go and then for the message here we can go ahead and pass in the class name of text till 800 and as you can see that this is a react component so it, it also behaves like a html element but i don't like closing i don't like closing out the ones that don't need to be closed so I'm going to move that and then close it out like a self-closing tag. And then let's see, 
save it that should be okay there we go so now every text is now teal now you can submit it you can submit it multiple times and there we go so that is looking nice so let's go ahead and submit this now i'm going to close this down we don't need this anymore close it down and then let's go ahead and go into front end mentor and then let me open up a cell and not let me know let me use netlify let me use netlify so Vassell and uh, sorry Netlify and Frontend Mentor. So let's log into Netlify. It's been a while until it logged me out. So let's log in. Even Frontend Mentor, really? <laughs> there we go. So let's go into Challenges, and then inside Netlify, we can log in, and then we can close this, and then we need to open up GitHub so that I can submit this to GitHub. So let's create a new repository here. And the repository is going to be called contact form, contact form dash yt. Create repository. And then let's copy this link. Let's say git. Okay, now let me zoom out because it's, it's a bit too much. I can close these ones. Close everything and I can close everything inside here. So git add assets and git commit dash m and I'm going to call this assets. And then git add design and git commit and I'm going to call it design design files. And then git add public and git commit. Inside here we only changed the document title, so update document title. And then git add source and git commit and I'm going to say main components. Then git add index.html and git commit. And I'm going to say this one is going to be HTML template. And then git add package star. So both of them. And then git commit. And I'm going to say that for this one, I'm going to say install comic and yap because that's what we did. Oh, and tailwind CSS. Tailwind CSS. And then git add readme star. So git commit that's m and i'm gonna say read me's and then git add style guide.md and git commit dash m and i'm gonna say style guide and then git add tailwind.config.js and git commit dash m and i'm gonna say tailwind config file and then finally git add dot git ignore and get commit that's and i'm gonna say get ignore and then we can say get remote add origin and then paste in the link that we copied and then get push dash you origin oh sorry we need to first change the branch so git branch dash m me which is going to change it to the main branch and then get push dash you origin main which is now going to push this thingy to github as that is doing that let's log in to netlify and so this is netlify so now this should have pushed to github there we go so we have our application right there one minute ago so let's go ahead and add a new site here from an existing project from github and then here we're going to search for contact form where it is or contact form dash yt and then we're going to deploy that so the site name i'm going to say uh, contact dash form dash yt let me add my name in the beginning so that it's easier to remember so contact form yt check availability my name is going to be available really you know and then this is the main branch this is the build and there we go so we don't have any environment variables so you can just go ahead and say deploy and then we're going to wait for that to deploy. As that is deploying, we can go into Frontend Mentor. We can click on this. And then you can say Visit Challenge Hub. And here we're going to say Submit Solution. So for the title, I'm going to say Contact Form in React JS, Former Tailwind CSS, Comic, and yeah. And this is going to be mobile first. There we go. 
the repository url is this one so just copy this paste it here and then the live site url we're going to need to wait a bit for this to finish deploying oh there we go so when you open this up then we should have it on the screen right there and there is our contact form looking fantastic so let's copy this and then let's paste it inside our live site url and yeah i think that is going to be okay that is going to be okay we can add some tags here like react like tailwind tailwind css like formic there's no formic yap there is no yap anyway we can just have those two anyway and we don't need this we don't need this we can just say submit solution so submit solution and then let's wait a bit and there we go so we have our solution we can just go ahead and close this and here is our solution fantastic and if you compare it so this is our solution and then this is the design so the only part where we really really went wrong is the borders and the reason why i added the borders is so that it's visible in the in the in the video and then we could have added in much much more space as you can see much more space and then of course we could have fixed the the text area but that's okay that's really okay fantastic so that is going to be the end of this video i hope you enjoyed it and if you did then please leave a like and subscribe to the channel if you're not already we are almost at six thousand subscribers and i have to say it's been quite a journey when i started this i thought that i would be much much more further along because it's been three years now but then i quickly realized that it's not so smooth it's not as smooth as people make it out to be uh, but then that's of course because i've been taking quite a bit of breaks and i've not been very much consistent as i was when i began so i think there are quite a bit of factors that have uh gone into that but i really appreciate every single subscription i really appreciate every single one of you who watches my videos it really helps me out it encourages me to keep on making videos to keep on researching to keep on learning new things so i do appreciate it so if you're not subscribed then please subscribe to the channel and leave a like on the video you can share it out with your friends as well i will see you in the next video Bye bye